right, so I had a question asked um, specifically about like kind of what I did as a trauma PA and then also uh, talking about my patient census because I mentioned that uh, I had a census or we as the trauma team had a census of over 60 patients and uh, the person that commented said, you know, that's a lot. I thought 20 patients was a lot, which 20 patients is a lot, uh, but 60 is a lot as well. And so I just wanted to clarify for you guys like ex exactly like what that looks like. What does a 60 patient census look like? Who and, and how much I'm really responsible for and what I do on a consistent basis as a trauma PA. So let's get into the video right now. Right, what's up you guys, it's the Donna, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so, um, 60 patient census, yes, uh, that is in totality. So obviously, I've, I've mentioned before that as the trauma team, like there's throughput in terms of like what how a patient is, like comes into the hospital, how they're seen, and then like how they kind of maneuver throughout the hospital and then essentially go home. And so for the trauma team, like we are, we are in the emergency department, but we are not part of the emergency department, at least on our trauma side. We are separate, although we are adjacent to, so adjuncts, I guess you can say. So a person can come into the emergency department and then be upgraded to become a trauma, or they can come into the hospital and be just go straight to trauma, or they can just come directly to trauma after being called on the box from the EMS, um, saying like, hey, you know, like, no, I don't need a consult. This is literally just information. I'm coming in with a 55 year old male that was in a car accident, had a long extrication, there's splintering on the windshield, loss of consciousness, um, diminished GCS, right? And so immediately this person is coming directly to trauma. This is not something that the emergency department is going to handle. So that is like, we are like the first line of defense, I guess you could say in terms of the trauma PAs, like we will be the ones that are seeing the patient. And we are very much like super, super involved. Like it is our patient. Uh, yes, we have our attendings that are like, their names are like the ones that are on the patient, but there are certain cases and certain patients that we will see on our own and then we will talk to our attendings about it you know when they come out of the OR or whatever the case may be we'll let them know what our plan of action has been thus far and if there's anything that they want us to do in addition they'll let us know but we are the first line. So if a patient comes in, I'm gonna be doing like the assessment, um, I'm gonna be prescribing the medication, I'm gonna be doing all of that, getting all the various different you know, imaging, that is essentially what happens. And so those patients that come in will be seen on the next shift if they are here overnight. And so that adds to our census. So if we had like 10 patients or 15 patients in total in the ICU and then and we had five patients in the IMC, um, but then we have 30 patients on the floor, that's 50 patients already. And that's kind of how it goes. So in trauma, our patients are spread out everywhere. There's gonna be patients in the emergency department, there are gonna be patients in the trauma bay, there are gonna be patients in the OR, in the PACU, there are gonna be patients on the floor, in the ICU, and in our step-down unit. Now, we are responsible for seeing all of those patients because we have to know what's going on with each of those patients. And although I am not like directly kind of taking care of the patients in the ICU because there are ICU PAs for that. Any, any patient anywhere else, I will be taking care of them. Now, because we are a trauma and acute care service, we see all of the general surgery patients as well. So your small bowel obstructions, your appendicitis, and your cholecystitis, like all of those, like that's our bread and butter as well. So we will have patients that are primarily medicine in nature. However, we as a consulting service for general surgery will also be managing those patients. So when I say I have a 60 patient census, that is overall. So the trauma PA team has two attendings, like for the an A, we have the list kind of split up into A and B. So the A team and the B team will have each an attending. They will also have each a PA. And then the ICU 
like attending that's taking care of all the trauma and critical care patients that came in will also be a part of the team but they're generally like we're still primary as the trauma team so it's it's kind of weird like they're primary but also kind of consulting in the ICU because um, they're boarding there and then they will have their own PA so I will be seeing, let's say, uh, all of the patients on the B team, but also some of those patients might be in the ICU, so I'll have to go and see them. Although the majority of the care will be done by the ICU PA, I still have to know what's going on with that patient because if there is something emergently that's wrong, like from a traumatic standpoint, um, or like you know a wound back isn't working or something along those lines, or the patient is bleeding and I need to now come and throw a couple sutures into something, they call me. You know, like the ICUPA will call me and be like, hey, this is what's going on. So, yes, it is a lot of patients. I think on each list, we would have like maybe like 30 or so patients, sometimes 20. Um, and the majority of them will be floor status. So, 20, we'll still have like about 20 patients that we are responsible for. Um, so, it is still a lot of patients, a lot of notes to write, a lot of people to like kind of be up on. Uh, and that is why, like, I always have my trusty handy list and I have my little notes on my list a little like highlighted in different colors so I know like what's going on with each patient I'll have check marks for things that I've done things that still need to be done will be in a different color uh, you have to be very systematic when you're dealing with lots of people and they all need something and so from a trauma PA standpoint, like we do a lot, you know, we're gonna still see traumas that come in actively. You know, if you come in from a bicycle accident, like I still will have to run downstairs and see you if my trauma ED PA colleague is busy with another trauma. We will have to pick up that kind of, you know, like slack, I guess you could say, which is not really a good word, but we'll just have to help out, um, help and, you know, like triage that patient as well because they need to be seen. Uh, but at the same time I still will have floor patients that need to be managed and so it's really important um, for us to be a team be team players um, but ultimately I'm not only just seeing patients in the emergency department and in, and in the trauma bay I'm managing floor patients as well and so that's where our synthesis can balloon like out of control and that's where we can get inundated with the various different tasks like pulling out chest tubes or inserting NG tubes or you know we get a consult for you know some of the subspecialties and we have to run and do like a Foley placement or we have to go do a line placement or put a chest tube in or there's a fistula that's bleeding. There are all these aspects of things that we have to kind of triage as well as taking care of our patients and so if that's not something that you want to do, if that's not something that you want to like be a part of, <laughs> if you solely want to just see patients and then send them out, you know, like then emergency medicine and uh, urgent care is for you. But from the tra in the trauma service, we see patients and they stay with us for a little bit longer, okay? It's not just like a one and done, like I'm seeing you for 24 hours and that's it. Although we do have those aspects of patients as well. But that is what I do as a trauma PA. Uh, if you want a more in-depth, detailed look, um, maybe I might try to like do some videos or something. I don't know. We'll see how that can go. Um, but I can try to like just be a little bit more detailed about like the day-to-day, -day, but also Ultimately, like that is essentially it uh, and when it comes down to our senses our senses can balloon out of control especially in the summer times when trauma is extremely high because um, people are out having fun and being stupid <laughs> so uh, we can have a really high senses but ultimately because we have a team um, and we are team players you know uh, it makes the workload light all right, so I hope I answered you guys' question. If you have any other questions for me, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for the new series called Who Wants to Be? And if you haven't already done so, like this video. Follow me on Instagram and down the PA and on Instagram at Get That CU University. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys. I will talk to you guys next time.